Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nisha. This is Nisha Loves That. I make videos about all the things I love, including but not limited to the things that are listed right over here. But today in particular, we are talking about fat adaptation and how I knew that I was fat adapted. Now, um, fat adaptation just means that your body has gotten used to utilizing fat as fuel instead of carbohydrates and glucose as fuel. That's the simple version. There's a more scientific one somewhere, but it ain't on this channel. So <laughs> sit back, relax, grab you a cup of coffee like I've got over here, and we're going to chat about fat adaptation and how I knew I was. Okay, so I started keto three years ago-ish. Uh, I started keto because I have Hashimoto's and I was extremely unwell. I was on medication, but I still, I wasn't better. I was a little better, but I was miserable and I was in a very, very bad place um, with my unwellness. And so I gave keto a shot. My husband, who is a physician, had diagnosed me along with my fertility specialist. And so that's how I knew I had Hashimoto's and then I started treating it with keto and desiccated thyroid in February of, of 2016, 2017. So for me, fat adaption came on within about, I would say six weeks. Now it can be faster, it can be slower. It depends on you and your body type and what kind of keto you're eating. If you're eating super, super clean, if you're utilizing your fats well, all of that good stuff depends on how much you weigh. If you have a metabolic disease, like there's all kinds of factors that can come into play on how long it takes. On average though, it's about four to six weeks. So for me, the complete phase uh, was about at six weeks, but I saw signs of my body becoming a fat adapted within seven days. The very first thing that I saw was my energy level. And that was a huge difference for me because with Hashimoto's, you have very low energy. You just are fatigued all the time to an ex you know, you're extremely fatigued. It's not just like, I'm tired. It's, I can't do anything. I can barely function kind of tired. And so within about seven days, I saw my energy level come back up. Now I wasn't back to normal but it was a significant change enough for me to be like, whoa, this keto thing, uh, there might be something to this because that was a huge deal for me. I was working full time in labor and delivery and that's pretty much the only place I was able to get up and function. But within seven days, I saw myself, Beckett's in the background screaming. <laughs> um, I saw my energy level come up to the point where I was wanting to do things at home. I wanted to go outside again. I wanted to cook in the kitchen. Like I was just becoming more like my old self. So that was the first thing that I saw. The second thing I saw was that my brain fog went away. And, and that was within, I would say, three or four weeks, it did take a little longer for me to see that benefit, but I did see it and it was crazy. It was like, I was able to think and, and function and have conversations and think intelligently and it actually come out of my mouth the way that I meant it to. There was just brain fog for me was one of the worst symptoms of Hashimoto's because I'm not stupid. I'm not a stupid person, but I was coming off in a way that it looked like I was really dumb. And that was very frustrating because I, I love talking and I love debating and I love having conversations and talking to smart people and, and learning from them and discussing things. And I was not able to do that in any form or fashion. Um, <laughs> it was awful. So for that to be gone, that was a huge deal for me. That may have been the main reason why I stuck to eating low carb keto in the beginning because I wanted my mental health to be back. And uh, so that goes into the next thing. I had extreme anxiety and I still struggle with anxiety now, 
but at that point it was crippling anxiety i mean that i would have panic attacks i would think i was dying um i literally ha had episodes where i would just lay on the couch and cry and like i think i was dying like i'm going to die literally that came out of my mouth multiple times it's never happened to me before i have a little i'm just anxious i'm an anxious person you know things get me a little wound up tight but i had never ever in my life had that kind of panic attack where someone else could see it uh, so that was strange and uncomfortable for me to be in that position and within I would say two or three weeks I, I was without any of those anxiety episodes and I haven't had anything since then and that was like three years ago I have not had that happen not one time since then so that was amazing um, I also was very depressed um, in relation to my Hashimoto's, that's something that a lot of people have with Hashis. So uh, that was gone. I was happy. I was upbeat. I was back to my old self within three to four weeks for that. One thing that took the longest for me to be able to see was the hunger uh, triggers. So for some people, that's a sign that they see early. For me, it took at least six weeks for me to see that it was two o'clock in the afternoon and I was at work and I hadn't been hungry yet. And that was really cool. So I, I remember being in labor delivery, looking at the clock and it being four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm working a 12 hour shift and I've been up since 530 and I hadn't eaten and I hadn't gotten mad or hangry or ir irritable or hadn't felt that gnawing, like I've got to eat something. I hadn't felt that way all day. And I was like, is it really four? I've not eaten anything. Of course, I've been drinking my water and all of that stuff all day long, but I had had no hunger pains and I was still okay at four o'clock after, a t you know, almost my 12 hour shift was being close to being over. And so that was really cool. So intermittent fasting became something that I did naturally. I never set out to intermittent fast and I still don't to this day. I intermittent fast as my body tells me to. So I eat when I'm hungry, I eat till I'm full. And if I'm not hungry, then I don't eat. And so that was really cool that I could work my 12 hour shift and not be at the mercy of hunger pain because I mean, any job, but especially in labor delivery, if I'm in the middle of a labor and I have a woman's leg up in the air and I'm helping her push and it's a new mom, I could be there for three hours. I don't have time to be like, can you hold on a minute, ma'am? I need a snack. I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't get to do that. And so it was really awesome. It was an awesome tool as a nurse to be able to do my job and and get through those times when I just couldn't go eat lunch or even a snack or even a drink of water or go to the bathroom. And I was fine. Uh, I was mentally clear and I wasn't irritable. I was fine. So that was really, really cool. And that was kind of a neat thing to see my body start doing that without me forcing it to. Another thing that happened about four to five weeks in was that I stopped craving cookies, cakes, chips, Cokes, ice cream the junk foods out of the vending machine that we had at work, I was able to just not even think about those. Whereas before I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know what I want? A ding dong, you know, or a bag of Cheetos or a Dr. Pepper or a Mountain Dew or whatever. I wasn't thinking about that. I was like, man, I could go for a cheeseburger. Or um, we had a pizza place near the hospital that made pizza with no crust. They would just do a bowl with the toppings and I would eat that. And I was really good about not having to have carbs and my brain not going there first when I was hungry. It would go to meat or cheese or fat bombs or whatever it was that I was eating in the beginning because I eat differently now than I used to. When I first started keto, I was obviously using fat bombs and MCT oil and a lot of things that I just don't use anymore because I now I'm ketovore and I've cleaned it up and I mainly eat meat. I was eating salads so I was very happy and satiated with the keto foods that I was eating to the point where I mean I very rarely ventured off. I remember on my birthday I went to this really cute milkshake bar and I ordered a milkshake and I took maybe five drinks out of it and that was it I was done which is crazy 
because I mean, I love a good milkshake. Don't get me wrong. They were so good, but it, I stopped. I stopped because I didn't want any more. I stopped because it really wasn't as good as I had thought it would be. And because I was like, I don't really want this. It's not really what I want. I ended up eating, they made homemade pork rinds there and I ate a huge thing of homemade pork rinds instead of the milkshake, which was really cool to see my body choosing on its own the thing that it wanted to run on. It wanted to run on the fat. It wanted to run on the protein. It didn't want the sugar. So it was a really cool thing. The cravings uh, slowly just got less and less over time. And at this point, I very, very rarely have cravings. I had cravings more early on with my when I was breastfeeding, like the first three months. I want pizza real bad. But other than that, keto has really and now Ketovore, calm the craving demon down and kind of shut him up and put him back in his cage. And I don't really see the demon of carb craving much anymore. Not to say that it won't happen again and I'll, I'll never see a milkshake and be like, dang, I wish I had one of those. It's life and I take it day by day. But for the most part, it's not something that I have to fight myself over. It's something that naturally I don't go towards like I used to. Another really cool thing I noticed was I woke up faster instead of you, when you wake up, you're just like, uh, and you hit the snooze button, you know, 85 times. I didn't do that like I used to. I pretty much got up when the alarm went off and I went about my business and I didn't lay there and moan and groan and waste time. I just would wake up and get on with it. And that was really helpful because um, I had to drive about 45 minutes to the hospital I was working at. And so I just, if I got behind, buddy, I was behind. And I had to speed and I don't like speeding. I've only had one ticket in my entire life. So it was really nice to be able to get up, have time to make my coffee, have time to take a shower, do my hair, do my makeup, get my life together, put my clean scrubs on. So yeah, that was really a neat thing to see as well. So those are just a few of the things that showed me my body was transitioning into using ketones or fat as power and energy. And I was able to utilize those better than I was using the carbs. My body was not using carbs well. In fact, it was rebelling against the carbs and acting crazy and just causing all kinds of problems for me. So uh, I'm not here to tell you to do it the way that I did it. I'm just here to tell you that this is what worked for me. This is why it worked for me and it continues to work for me to this day. I'm sustaining it and I don't have a problem sustaining it. I enjoy eating this way and I enjoy how I feel. So I hope this video may have helped you to recognize if these things are going on in your body as well. If they are, that probably means you're well on your way to being fat adapted. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumb, subscribe to my channel for more keto videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you, mean it.